Chapter 35, Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidest my righteousness is more than God's? For thou saidest, What advantage will it be unto thee, and what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what doest thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of thine hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, Where is God, my Maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven? There they cry, but none giveth answer, because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. Therefore doth Job open his mouth in vain. He multiplieth words without knowledge. Chapter 36. Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty and despises not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous. But with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters and be holden in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in Heart heap up wrath, they cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth his ears in oppression. Even so would he have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place, where there is no straightness, and that which be set on thy table shall be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the judgment of the wicked, Judgment and justice take hold on thee, because there is wrath, because lest he take thee away with his stroke, then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Will he esteem thy riches? No, not gold, nor all the forces of strength. Desire not the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed, regard not iniquity, for this hast thou chosen rather than affliction." Behold, God exalteth by his power, who teacheth like him? Who hath enjoined him his way, or who can say, Thou hast wrought iniquity? Remember that thou magnify his work, which men behold. Every man may see it, man may behold it afar off. Behold, God is great, and we knew him not, and we know him not. Verse 26. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. For he maketh small the drops of water. They pour down rain according to the vapor thereof, which the clouds do drop and distill upon man abundantly. Also can any 
understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise of his tabernacle. Behold, he spread his light upon it and covereth the bottom of the sea. For by them judges he the poor, excuse me, verse 31, by them judges he the people. He giveth meat in abundance. Uh, with clouds he covereth the light and commandeth it not to shine by the cloud that cometh betwixt. The noise thereof showeth concerning it, the cattle also concerning the vapor. Chapter 37. At this also my heart trembled and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, and the breath of waters is straightened. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud. And it is turned around by his counsels that they do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Dost thou know when God disposed them and causeth the light of his cloud to shine? Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge? How thy garments are warm when he quieteth the earth by the south wind? Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I, that I speak? If a man speak, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright cloud which is in the clouds. Excuse me, verse 21. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of the north, but God is terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart.